I'm Kay and I'm a late bloomer. It's the middle of August and time to see what's working and what's not in my fourth summer garden. Check out a few harvests and uh, a few lessons learned. But first, how about a little color? There's so much green, but as you can see, if you look closely, there's a lot of color. <laughs> the plants really benefited from the July 18th rain, but so did powdery mildew. It spread like wildfire. I'd already removed the leaves and stems like four feet up the uh, tomato vines, and here's another one that uh, really needs to go. It's just my challenge here in the late bloomer garden. I really tried even more than last year to be successful at tomatoes this year. And I've had some successes and um, some not so successful vines. <laughs> but this is my only prospect for a two pound tomato. And I only had one two pound tomato last year and I was hoping for another one this year. You know, I could leave it here one more day and see if it picks up a few more ounces overnight. <laughs> I think I will. Why not? My friend Jake Stahl in Canada sent me spaghetti squash seeds and they started out great. You saw in my other episodes, this entire back 40, you could not see in there. It was solid leaves. Well, they really succumbed to powdery mildew and I selectively removed leaves until there were no leaves. <laughs> And then I discovered that the vines had been um, eaten on either by uh, vine borers, which I never saw, or just the roly polies, the sow bugs. Um, however, I did get 18 squash. This is one of the smaller ones. And as you can see, the vine is completely dried up. Um, but this is kind of looks okay. <laughs> I think we should cut it open and see what it looks like inside. I've already given three of these away and uh, reports came back that it tasted good. One thing that will be back next year is lemon cucumber. These five plants grew like gangbusters and produced many pounds of fruit, some of which I made into pickles and um, then powdery mildew took over. There's a little bit of activity left in this one plant and these cucumbers are ready to pick. So you know from my last episode that my corn is already pulled from my raised bed. And I immediately planted my okra seedlings. There's about seven of these here and one Kushaw squash. I was given four seeds and they all germinated and I gave one plant to a couple in Orange County and planted two down at my neighbors and one is here and I am very hopeful. But the leaves are so big that they wilt in the middle of the day. So I am keeping this uh, little tent over it with the uh, row cover cloth until the little feeler roots start really taking up moisture from the soil. All I hope for is one beautiful Kushaw squash. My pretty Mexican sunflower decided to uh, sprout right beside the sidewalk. So while it's lovely, it hangs over 
halfway. <laughs> and down here is my star attraction. This is my mature pumpkin. Well, almost mature. And as you can see, fighting back the powdery mildew on the leaves. Very excited about this is my first mature pumpkin ever. <laughs> this is pumpkin number two. And the vine grew up through the native glass gem corn because the leaves were reaching up to the light. And uh, so I've created this makeshift support and hope that <laughs> I can baby the leaves, beat down the powdery mildew to keep enough nutrients coming through the vine so that this baby reaches maturity. Ooh, that's a lot of dill. Here we go. I haven't tried one yet. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's so good. Wow. Wow. Uh, I'll put the recipe on my website. Hey, subscribe to LateBloomerShow.com. There's a lot of great content there that you won't see in my episodes because there's just not enough time. The great thing about refrigerator pickles as opposed to, you know, canning them with heat is um, they're raw, so they stay fresher and crispier, but you can't keep them in the refrigerator more than two months. These even have my cayenne pepper that I grew last year, so they have a little bit of bite. This is my lemon squash, and this will definitely be back. I do have to constantly spray for powdery mildew, but check this out. If I can reach it. Okay. They're ripe when they're the size of a lemon. Just twist them off. And look at that. That is a perfect salad size. Ah. Can you see this beautiful thing? This is a Phileas Blue Pepper, uh, 50,000 on the Scoville scale, I think. And the some people just grow this for purely decorative, um, ornamental purposes. Uh, but the peppers turn from beautiful purple to orange and sort of a pinky and then an orange and then a red i haven't tried to eat one yet <laughs> this is my new favorite pepper because <laughs> it's so pretty <laughs> all righty turkish striped monastery this is Gary Osena. This is um, Sweet King of the North. I have four of those. They make these little beautiful red. I've got long red cayenne, peppermint, mystery tomato, lemon squash, lemon cucumber, and red cherry tomatoes. Today's harvest. This makes it all worthwhile. I'm a proud mama. Okay, the moment of truth. I'm guessing I did not make it, and it's 1.75. Oh, it's not even one and a half. Bummer. If you have a recommendation for me that you think might grow well in the late bloomer garden, please let me know. And if you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and share with a friend. I'm Kay, I'm a late bloomer. Thanks for watching. See you next time. That was an interesting, <coughs> an interesting sensation. <clears throat> but I did get a lot of um, melons there. Uh, they're not melons. Come on, Kay. Gosh, <laughs> are we done? I mean, the nasty leaves and off. <laughs>
What do you think? Should I? 50,000? 